All right. Well, 2020 was a big year for our next guest. 2021 could be even bigger. As we found out a little over a month ago, this man is going to be facing Dominic Cruz, March 6th at UFC 259. Happy to welcome back Casey Kenny to the program. Happy New Year, sir. How are you? Happy New Year, man. Uh, I'm doing great. Just uh, getting home from training and uh, got a few more weeks before the big uh, Dominic Cruz fight. But like you said, uh, always trying to spread some positivity and enjoy life, man. So uh, doing my normal stuff. Yeah, especially we're recording this on Wednesday and you know, we need this positivity right now, but we're going to stick to fighting. By, by, by the way, I, and I'm sure you've probably addressed this before at some point. So excuse me for being redundant, but every time I've done an interview with you, Casey, whether it's for this website or any other website, the comments are flooded with, Hey, it's TJ Dillashaw's little <laughs> brother, or TJ Dillashaw jr. For, and from a guy that gets like Dana White's little brother and Dana White jr. Do you right. get that a lot? The Dillashaw comparison? Yeah. The messages, the, you know, the, the normal casual comments that you see, uh, I've even been tagged in a couple like, uh, Dillashaw and yawn, have a baby type thing. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll take it all. I'll take it all. Uh, but I, I always tell all my teammates that, uh, I'm going to have to kick Dillashaw's ass eventually, you know, kind of switch that around. So he could be like Casey Kenny jr. Right. Exactly. I love it, man. So you got yourself, a. Uh... A nice early holiday gift, Dominic Cruz. I, I have to tell you, man, this one came out of left field, but I absolutely love the matchmaking. I'm sure you do as well. But coming out of the Fight Island trip and getting the two wins over there, big 2020 for you. How did you react to finding out that your next fight would be against freaking Dominic Cruz? Uh, I was, it was amazing, man. You know, uh, it was a little longer than I wanted to wait, but for a fight like that, I'll wait as long as you want me to. You know, um, I was actually. I thought I was going to be back December 12th. Um, I actually signed a contract to fight and uh, opponent backed out. And then they hit me with Dominic Cruz. And I'm like, let's do it. Who are you supposed to fight on December 12th, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, Song Dong. Oh, really? Yeah. He, uh, I guess, verbally agreed. But when it came time to put pen to paper, he had some second thoughts. So, uh, But that's OK. I'm, I'm glad where, where I ended up. And, uh, you know, the Dominic Cruz fight was offered shortly after. And I'm like, let's do it. Uh, I'm ready. It's funny because when this fight was announced, I had like a little theory about it. And it was that my immediate thoughts were Casey or your manager, Jason House, have been all over the matchmakers to try to get you another fight uh, coming off fight. island, like get you another card, just yep. constant messages like Casey wants to fight. Casey wants to fight and because of that. Sean or Mick just said, you know what? Stop bothering me. We know Casey wants to fight. How about we give him Dominic Cruz? Will you stop bothering me then? And I mean, obviously, I'm mostly joking, but that's that's kind of a theory of mine that that I had coming out of that fight. Yeah, you know, closed mouths don't get fed, and, and uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I was ready to fight. I I, I signed my part, and uh, you know, I would have been back one more number five for the year, but that's all right. Uh, when it came time to getting back into camp and stuff, I'm like, uh, maybe maybe a few months wouldn't hurt here to kind of heal up and uh, recover. Yeah. I mean, 2020, it didn't start great for you. You, you lost the fight to Marab, but I mean, you went on to win the three straight and it ended great. Losing sucks, but I feel like that loss, I, I don't want to say it was like the best thing to happen to you, but I feel like the timing of it, it was, it was a like great timing. You know what I mean? Like it helps put things in perspective, like so early in the year, maybe like, is that somewhat accurate? Yeah, exactly. And you know, I've been a competitor my whole life and some of my greatest runs I've had in other sports have been off of a loss where you know, mentally, I changed a few things. Uh, you know, physically, I got bigger after that. You know, the Marab thing was kind of an eye opener on that one. And uh, you know, how you respond after a loss is what a true champion does. And you know, that's I've been doing that my whole life. And uh, you know, happy with the way I responded. And uh, you know, no stopping now. We spoke right before your fight with Nathaniel Wood. You were on Fight Island, and you guys put on a show at UFC 254. Is the fight like everyone had hoped to see when when the fight was announced? What a gritty, hard fought battle that was! It, it was the fight of the night on one of the biggest cards of the year. You get it done, but I mean, you get the win and the bonus. But you probably learned so much in that fight. What were those 15 minutes like for you, man? Uh, it was great. It was a fight that I've been wanting for a long time. You know, as uh, as sick as it sounds, you know, those are the fights that. You know, I've dr I've dreamt of being in you know a, t a tough fight uh, where the dudes you know not backing down for the whole 15 minutes and 
you know, uh, guys like Alateng, he didn't back down, but he wasn't really hitting me with anything. You know, Wood was, you know, right in the mix. And, uh, you know, I still felt like my shots were bigger than his, but he was not backing down. He was throwing. He was connecting the whole time. So uh, it, it was an amazing fight, man, you know. And <clears throat> like you said, the the I don't know exactly, couldn't put words on it, uh, what I learned from that fight, but, you know, I, I gained a lot and improved a lot, and you know, especially the confidence. You know, uh, I, I guess that would be the the biggest thing that I can throw down for 15 minutes. You know, anytime you want. It's the fight you wanted. It's the fight like you've been dreaming of a, a battle of attrition like that. Is it one of those things where like, okay, I've done it now. I don't need to do that anymore. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, I always knew I could I could uh, be in a fight like that. But now I've done it, and now I'm I'm looking to get in there. Well, I, you know, I was trying to put Wood away the, the entire time. Right. You know, he just happened to stick around. But uh, you know, hopefully I go in there, and you know, I, I put Dom away in a round or two, and um, I don't have to slug it out for 15 minutes. Like when you look back on your career, in I don't know, like 25 years from now, do you think that that fight with Nathaniel in the like the book of Casey Kenny, that fight alone is gonna like have its own chapter? Because I feel like when you share something like that with another competitor, it's just one of those things that just that's never gonna leave your mind, you know? Right. Um, you know, most of my fights, I got, <clears throat> I think this that was my 19th professional fight, and I could, you know, I got a pretty pretty uh, good image in my head of each and every one of them that I've been in. Um, so, but that one, especially, you know, that that's going to go down in the, the record books, you know, um, wasn't fight of the year candidate, but, uh, I think it was pretty close. Is that like, is that your favorite fight of your career? Uh, man, the last two were pretty good, but <laughs> I, I feel like, uh, it's my, you know, that, that's my favorite in its own way. You know, I got some other ones that I got some, you know, my, my knee knockout one is a pretty, uh, pretty good one in there but you know for different reasons so uh the nathaniel one definitely goes down as like you know one of those wars that we'll, we'll put a uh, put in there forever so let's talk about this next fight against dominic cruz he returned after a lengthy layoff in may got finished by henry cejudo at ufc 249 and i know a lot of people questioned the stoppage in that fight dominic certainly did he had a lot to say about the referee but uh what did you think of the stoppage uh, man, I, I get both point of views, you know, but when you get dropped and you take, I don't even know how many, I think it was five to 10 unanswered shots, you know, he was trying to get back up, but he wasn't defending himself. You know, he never put his hand up to defend himself, which I feel like is what a ref looks for, you know, when someone's swinging on you. So, uh, but I get his argument as well, you know, but, um, I'm going to leave that one to the, to the referee, you know, I'm going to leave that one to the referee, but I, I think it was a decent stoppage, you know? Um, I, but I get Dom's point, you know, as a fighter, we want to stay in there until we're unconscious, but, uh, you know, decent stoppage. All right. Fair enough. I mean, you're, you're a guy that's always trading. You're always working. And yeah. especially in the, in these times, in case that phone were to ring and something pops up, you want to be ready. But have you, have you started like a quote unquote, actual training camp for this fight yet yeah uh, you know the main thing that i'm working on this camp is uh, my booze intake and my cigarette intake you know here dom <laughs> dom has a, <laughs> a kryptonite for booze and cigarettes so uh that's the first thing i'm going to start off with in camp and then we'll <laughs> and then we'll worry about the technique and the cardio and all that good stuff <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that is freaking hilarious so how is no, the intake? Are you building up? You building up that tolerance? <laughs> building up that tolerance, right? Um, you know, I come from small town Indiana. We're the king of booze and cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, for real. Um, yeah, camp started. Start, you know, it's it's up and going. Like I said, I'm always training. Right now, <clears throat> I think I was nine weeks out last Saturday. I'm kind of just waiting to turn turn the notch on camp you know got to still got some time and uh over the years i realized when i have this much time i need to kind of just keep training the way i'm training and then in a, you know when it gets a little bit closer you know i'll turn it up a little bit what is i mean i know you're going to be turning it up soon but like what do you think like the preparation is going to be like like i know fighters focus on themselves and improving what right. they're going to do but you know dominic's kind of a different cat with the footwork and the angles and the different things he brings to the table like do you approach this fight any differently than others in the past or is it mostly the same it's pretty much the same you know i'm 
each and every person I, you know, I, I look at how they move and we're going to try to get similar looks or as close of a look as we can get to that person. But in reality, you're never going to mimic, you know, especially a guy like Dominic, Dominic, you're never going to completely mim- mimic him. Um, you know, you can get some decent good looks to give you an idea, but the main thing is keeping what I have sharp, you know, making my improvements and, you know, uh, the way I fight and, you know, my IQ, I can, you know, make adjustments in there. And I'm always ready for anything. There's nothing Dom, you know, is going to do that I haven't seen before. You know, he's got two hands, two legs, you know, maybe a little bit different movement. But, you know, he's not going to have any third arm coming out and hitting me or anything like that. So I'll be ready for it. Um, But, you know, obviously uh, the level we're at, if I get a couple guys to try to move like him, gives me, you know, a a slight idea of how it's going to be. What about like from a mental perspective? Because I'm sure like Dominic's a guy you watched coming up as a fan and, and getting into the sport. And he's definitely the biggest name you've been paired up with. And sometimes, and you, you, I'm sure you've seen it watching the sport, like the respect one has for a legendary competitor and a former champion. Like it does play a factor once you're in there. Like the moment becomes like so surreal that it can throw fighters off. And, you know, is that something that you think about? Like, do you have like ways to ignore that noise and try to focus on getting your hand raised? Like, it just seems like such a strange thing. And most fighters like, I don't even think about that. But then once you're in there, it's like, Ooh, this is a, this is a little different. That's a real moment. Um, I think one of my best, you know, attributes is my ability to compete. And that's gonna, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to be myself no matter who's in front of me. Um, you know, and I prove that time and time again with, you know, showing up to all my title fights, uh, you know, the contender series, my UFC debut, all the above. When, when the, the moment's big, you know, I rise to the occasion. And, you know, I don't see it going any other way with Dom. Um, you know, this is what I got into this sport for is to fight guys exactly like him. And, uh, you know, in moments exactly like the one I had on Fight Island. So uh, I, I don't see it being any different. What about this fight? excite you the most like is it the opportunity is it is it fighting a guy like dom is it the 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 chess match like where it could take you like it seems like such a cliche question but there's obviously a lot at play here when you fight a guy like that like what excites you the most about this fight i think it's going to put me in a position where you know where i want to be in the ufc uh obviously jumping into the top five top ten chasing a belt you know that's the ultimate goal and, you know, Dom just happens to be the next guy in the way. And uh, it's a great guy to be in the way. You know, his last fight was for the belt. I think it's, um, you know, he only has a few fights left in his career, you know, as far as, uh, you know, he's not going to have many more opponents than, you know, after me. Um, so I'm <clears throat> grateful to have that, you know, that shot. Um, but really, whoever they put in front of me is is going to get taken out or, you know, the next, uh, the next target. Um, you know, maybe uh, Aldo or Edgar will be next. I wouldn't mind going on a legend tour. There you go. It, yeah, it's funny because when this fight was announced, that seems to be like the consensus. Like if you beat Dominic Cruz at UFC 259, like this could be yeah. it for him. Like he's on the broadcast team. He's got different projects he's working on. Like do, have you allowed yourself to to even think about that? Like I could be the last guy that Dominic Cruz ever fights. Like I could right. be the one that potentially, I guess, retires the, the guy. Is that like too dangerous of a thing to think about? <clears throat> Um, you know, I don't want to think about that too, too much. You know, obviously that's out there. You you can hear people talk about it, but you know, I don't want to ever count anybody out. And when I say he's only got a handful of fights, you know, <clears throat> that could be anywhere from one to five more fights, but you know, Dominic Cruz isn't going to have 10, 20 more fights. You know, he doesn't have 10 years left in the game type of thing. Uh, as far as like this being his last fight, uh, who knows, you know, I'm never going to count the guy out, um, no matter what happens on the, on March 6th, but uh, I know it's probably going to be one of his last few. That's for sure. So how do we get this thing done? Massive opportunity awaits you. You're going to go in there and have some fun with the former champion. How does this thing play out on March 6th? I'm due for a finish. I'm due for a finish. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to touch his chin just like I've touched everybody else's and, uh, we'll see if it holds up. And then, uh, if you know, he wants to grapple, let's see if, uh, maybe I'll be the first guy ever to submit Dominic Cruz. It's it's funny like talking about this because I I remember like some of our like early conversations like when you first got into the UFC and and you've always been like you've always been like a next man up kind of a guy but in every conversation we've had like you've always like threw a name out there and like shot for the stars like you, like Faber and Edgar I remember you calling out and Aldo was another guy like all these interview calls but if you beat Dominic like. 
these matchups that, that you've been calling for for a while, like they could be there for you. Like with right. that said, do you have like lofty goals for 2021? Like, is there something in place in your mind that says, you know what, this year kicks ass for me if this and this happens? Yeah. I mean, step one, taking out Dominic, uh, it's early in the year. I like to fight a lot. I'm trying to get, you know, three, four fights in this year. And, uh, Obviously, the the more I work up, I may have to wait a little bit longer to get you know the matchup that they want me to have. But uh, definitely two or three in this year, and I think two or three in this year, and I think uh, you know I'm gonna be right in there for you know title talk or one or t- one or two away. You know I, I put Dom away and I finished two more people this year. I got to be right up there. Yeah, man. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, when this fight was announced, like I said, it was it was an eye opener, but I was like, oh, this is really good. But I know I don't speak for myself. Definitely looking forward to this one, man, against one of the greatest ever foot and ste- step inside the cage. March 6th, UFC 259. Casey Kenny takes on Dominic Cruz. Appreciate the time as always, man. We need this positivity in 2021. All the best to you and happy new year, man. Hey, happy new year, man. Uh, always a pleasure. And uh, I'm sure I'll be speaking to you sometime soon. All right. Take it easy on the booze and the cigarettes, though. Yeah, you know, uh, I had my fill today. I uh, just got, had a few after sparring, but uh, we're going to call it quits. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Have a good one, brother. You too.